Okay, here's our familiar grid of numbers. Now you've probably seen this grid of numbers before, it's probably very familiar to you. In particular, suppose I took this grid and didn't write it as a rectangular array, but instead tilted the picture 45 degrees, so it becomes a triangular array instead. So what I mean by that is I take this grid, tilt it 45 degrees, so this top left corner is now going to be at the apex of my triangular version. Uh, this row, this diagonal row, or diagonal slide, I should say, that's currently 1, 1, will get tilted 90 degrees, become a horizontal row of 1, 1. This diagonal of 1, 2, 1 will get tilted and become a horizontal row of 1, 2, 1, and so on. 1, 3, 3, 1, and off I go. I can do all the diagonals, and all it is is just this grid of numbers tilted 45 degrees. And I can actually fill in this pretty quickly, because you can probably guess what I'm doing to see these numbers that even look at the grid anymore. Uh, 35, 35, 21, 7, 1, and so on. Alright, so what did I do here? Well, obviously, all the geometry that existed in this particular grid to begin with is in this triangle as well. Just might look slightly different. In fact, it might look 45 degrees different. For example, this 20 in the grid was the number, some of the numbers above it and to its left. It's really this 10 and this 10 added together. 10 plus 10 is 20. How's that translate? If I tilt that little picture 45 degrees, well, it's this 20 is really this 10 and this 10, the two numbers above it. In fact, every number in this grid, this 35, for example, is this 20 and this 15 summed together, which makes sense because this 35, what is it? Uh, it's the second 35 on the diagonal, so it must be this 35 here, is the D, this 20 and this 15. So when that little box, got, the little L-shape got rotated uh, 45 degrees, becomes a little V-shape in the grid. All right, so that's how we know Pascal's triangle. Every number is really actually the sum of the two numbers above it. Um, you can even say that's true for the edge as well. For example, this one, if you like, you can say it's this one plus this blank. This one is this one, is this this, well, this one is this one plus its blank, and so on. So the only number that really starts at the beginning is this one at the very top of the apex, and that generates the rest of the triangle. It being every number below is the sum of the two numbers just above it. Great. But we actually know more about this grid of numbers than just that geometric feature. We actually have a formula for each entry in this particular cell. For example, this 35 is counts the number of paths from the start to that ending position, which is really a bunch of right steps and down steps. In fact, this is a, what, a one, two, three, four right steps and uh, zero, one, two, three down steps. So all the words consisting of seven letters, which are four R's and three D's, gives me all the paths from start to end, and turns out that's 35 ways. In fact, the way the formula we had for that 35 is really it's seven letters, three R, three D's, and four D's, um, of three which are uh, D's, four which of R's. So this 35 is really seven factorial over three factorial, four factorial. We do this for every particular entry in the grid. In fact, in fact, here's how you think about it. We really counted the number of R's for the column. So this column has a zero right steps. This has one right step, two right steps, three right steps, four right steps, and so on. This row, first row, has zero down steps. Any, there, any entry here requires zero down steps. One down step, two down steps, three down steps, four down steps, five down steps. So actually, we're counting the positions in this grid by row number and column number, but doing our count, all our counts starting at zero. So this is really in the fourth column and the third column, three and four at the denominators, and it's actually on the seventh diagonal. One, uh, well, I guess we're counting, counting our counts as zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which makes sense, because everything on the seventh diagonal really is the words composed of seven letters. Now, how does all that translate to the original triangle? Well, as before, we seem to be counting all our steps from zero. So let's regard the very tippy top as the zero throw, then the one throw, the two throw, the three throw, the four throw, the fifth throw, the sixth throw, and the seventh throw. And there's the actual 35s, the second 35 on the diagonal, yep, the second 35. And indeed, it's on the seventh row. It's on the seventh diagonal. All right, now what's this three and four look like on the triangle? Well, remember, we came down here, zero, one, two, three steps. That's three downs, one, five, 15, 35. Where's the one, five, 15, 35 over here? It's this way, zero, one, two, three. That's the three down steps this way. But look at this. It's its own little sub-equilateral triangle. So counting from this direction on the side of the sub-equilateral triangle is the same as counting on the bottom. So I might as well count on one, the seventh row, zero, one, two, three. So it's actually three places in from the right, starting my counts at zero. And what's this four factorial? Zero, one, two, three, four. It's really this row, which is really 
these numbers here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's a little bit awkward, but actually, given by the geometry of the triangle itself, the side of that little sub equilateral triangle is the same as the side of that, uh, same as this side of the sub equilateral triangle. So I might as well count along the bottom 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So here's a lovely way to interpret that formula in the triangle. Okay, 35 is on the seventh diagonal, all right? Seven factor, se seventh row, excuse me, seventh row. Seven factorial on the top. How many places in from the left? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 places in from the left. 0, 1, 2, 3 places in from the right. It is 7, seven factorial, 4 factorial, 3 factorial. Uh, example, that 10 is on the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, fifth row, so it must be 5 factorial. And it's 0, 1, 2 places in from the left, 2 factorial, 0, 1, 2, 3 places from the right. Bingo, there's a formula for that number 10. And I believe 5 factorial over 2 factorial, 3 factorial is indeed 10. All of that is, is just counting R's and D's just done in this triangular array instead. And it works for even these like, side ones. For example, this is on the 0, 1, 2, 3, fourth row. It is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Four places in from the left. Uh, zero places in from the right. Thank goodness we defined 0 factorial to be 1 because it's very convenient because now I've got 4 factorial over 4 factorial 1 over times 1. That is indeed 1. And this guy at the very top, which is the weird one, is 0 row. Zero places in from the left, zero places in from the right. It's zero factorial over zero factorial, zero factorial. Thank goodness indeed that we did define zero factorial to be one for convenience. Great. So there it is. There is an actual formula for the entries in Pascal's triangle. It's given by the row number, how many places in from the left and right. And that's just beautiful. Um, so that's the, so we've got now two ways to think of Pascal's triangle. We've got the formula, we've got the geometry, and then you can ask, well, okay, do other patterns that have arose in the grid arise in the triangle? To which the answer has to be yes. For example, we had the stocking property. For example, I'll choose a column, I choose this column, come down, go down for a while until you feel like turning away from start. One plus three plus six plus 10, the numbers in the leg, and up to the toe. So what's that doing on this grid? Where's that one, three, six, there it is. 1, 3, 6, and 10, go down a diagonal for a while, start at a 1 and come down a diagonal, and then turn away 90 degrees from start, Whoop, which I guess is downwards. 1 plus 3 plus 6, and 10 is the toe, 20. So the stocking property looks like start at 1s, come down, then turn it away from the start, which is turned downwards, bingo. All right, so anything you discover about the grid of numbers actually translates to the triangular array, Pascal's triangle as well. Grand, grand stuff.